Hey guys, so I'm off to a late start in PvP and that's mainly because well I just really missed the way my warrior was set up in Mist of Pandaria. Okay, so I also late started late in Mist of Pandaria. I resubbed during that dry period where you know, we basically had no new content for a while, and I think that was around July of last year. Anyway, I'm pretty much a casual in PvP, so I did BGs in the previous um, expansion. Also did some 2v2s with a friend until he had real life things to take care of. He's no longer subbed. Um, I really was into the arm spec at the time, uh, but so much has changed in this expansion, Draenor. It's just, it didn't feel right for me personally. You know, <laughs> Basically, this whirlwind, whirlwind thing, it, it twirling around so much. I just, it just makes me miss overpower all the more. On the defensive side of things, you know, being trained as a warrior is nearly, pretty much a guaranteed death. So I did try other specs. Uh, Fury was a bit better than Arms, but the proc playstyle just didn't suit me. Gladiator stance was something I enjoyed. It, you know, it basically gives you that sword and board playstyle that also allows you to have access to your defensive CDs that makes you really tanky. You know, but that wasn't enough for me. So in addition to just reading up, uh, doing a lot of searches, experimenting, I tried full prot by using defensive stance. And basically because of that, all of a sudden on a personal level, warrior PvP was fun again. Yeah, defensive stance PvP has the damage close to gladiator stance output with the toughness of a true prot spec warrior. You still have your stamina, damage reduction, and armor buffs uh, while, you know, while PvPing this way. You are there basically, as in my experience, to frustrate your enemies and if you time it properly, you are even capable of a decent amount of burst. Now to be honest, uh, arms and fury dominate the ladders at the moment, but protection has its potential. What I'd like to show you is an alternative in case it, it isn't apparent to you from the get-go. So if you're interested, watch on as I discuss the basics of prot PvP. Um, you know, as with my you know other guides, I'll first discuss the talent suggestions for this playstyle. And you can you can also click on the links you're seeing right now in case you were interested in specific portions. So as you know, as with my other tanking guides, uh, just note that I do insert uh, glyph suggestions as I go along. Okay, so just because we're running um, a defensive stance PvP, it doesn't mean that uh, we'll be following the standard talents for a PvE prod warrior. So it's going to be a bit different from my PvE tanking guide. So for tier 1, uh, you can either go for Warbringer or Double Time. So it's not entirely great in terms of mobility. Um, well, I just which reminds me so much of the mobility that warriors had in Mists but um, either choice is useful so i normally sit on warbringer for the stun so against mages or if you expect to be you know facing mages and hunters i suggest that uh, you pick up a double time for that quick chase and um, if you find yourself running with group targets let's say you're facing off against a melee cleave um, i would suggest the glyph of blitz for that additional route and if you're chasing and you know you often find yourself against uh, maybe mages, uh, hunters, or maybe even druids. You can suggest uh, well, I can I suggest the glyph of long charge. For tier two, um, it was good for my warrior tanking video. It's also good uh, for PvP. So I'm trying to forget the old second wind passive that we had in mists. Uh, apologies if I keep referencing Miss. I just really miss the way my warrior was set up back then. But um, Enraged Regeneration has been pretty good at uh, helping me forget that second win talent. It's useful while stunned and it scales with health. So just remember to maximize its use by having Commanding Shout turned on when you use it. And if you want to get more out of it, uh, you can also consider using the Primal Trinket. Or better yet, you can also use your own Last Stand ability. For tier 3, well basically free, free executes are always good and they proc very often for proc warriors. So heavy repercussions is not a good option due to the stance you're going to use. Um, unyielding strikes, mm, 
It's something I'm also considering due to, you know, being able to spam Heroic Strike. But uh, it's still something I'm trying to test and study a bit more. For Tier 4, you have two options for this. Uh, you either run with Stormbolt or Shockwave, and that's mainly because of the stun effect. If you can round them up, uh, Shockwave is the better option, as it can almost certainly shift how a fight is going. And of course, if you want the range stun, then you take Stormbolt. Tier 5, so I normally run with Spell Reflect and it really helps even in battlegrounds as you don't have to worry about who to protect from a CC or incoming big spell damage. If you're running with a friend or in an arena team, then it's either Vigilance or Safeguard. So if you're expecting your teammate to be trained, I strongly suggest either of the latter two choices. For Tier 6, I've been enjoying Bloodbath for that damage buff and snare. So Avatar is also a good pick for when you have to get out of a route and you get, uh, you'd like to have a good uh, damage buff for about a good uh, 24 seconds. Um, now Bladestorm, it isn't good mainly because uh, you are running sword and board. Uh, but it still has that ability to get you out of roots and makes you immune to CC. So as with the previous um, season, timing it properly can save you from a crowd control effect. So for all these tier 6 talents, it's important to note that you know it ties heavily into my pick for the very last tier. Okay, so for the final tier, it's basically just anger management. Um, this is your last pick for defensive stance PvP. So what this does is that it lowers the cooldown of your tier 6 damage abilities and your tier 3 stun abilities. So which makes them, in a sense, all those things just spammable skills. So just be aware that for your stun abilities, um, uh, anger management, if you you know put out your abilities too fast or use them too fast, uh, it can backfire because of diminishing returns. Now for the protection spec, it also lowers the cooldown of shield wall, demo shout, and last stand. So making it uh, good for extended games or battlegrounds. Okay, it's time to move on to our stat priority for defensive stance PvP. So there will be some similarities uh, to how you run as a PvE tank, but uh, here it goes. So it's bonus armor, mastery, versatility, and critical strike. So bonus armor is your preferred stat because it gives you damage and damage reduction. Um, in scenarios where you want more damage or you are unable to get bonus armor, um, go for other stats or go for strength or attack power buffs. The second stat is mastery, so it increases your chance to block and critically block. Um, this is useful in many scenarios, PvP scenarios, as I've noticed a lot of, a lot, basically a lot of melee classes running around. In addition, mastery also adds attack power, which gives you more damage, so that's very important. The third one, uh, it isn't popular, uh, that's versatility, but it's good because of the overall increased damage, healing, absorbs, and it also adds a small damage reduction. Also, just because it's number three on my list uh, doesn't mean it's bad. Although the benefits are small, it's a good stat for prot warriors due to the all-around effect. So every 1% of um, versatility increases your damage equally and half that amount inter for damage reduction so it is possible that you might want to push this higher than mastery because of the dual effect so as you know just someone pointed out in my P pve tank guide uh, just remember that um, percent based heals are not modified by any other um, passive or ability so the fourth uh, stat priority to follow is Critical Strike. So it's good for that extra RNG, RNG damage or random damage, but um, it also gives you parry chance due to your repost skill. So again, repost adds parry chance based on your crit chance value. Okay, so of course your enchants, food, and flask buffs will also follow the same priority. Um, they can be what you're seeing in your screen right now. So I normally suggest budget versions of buffs, but of course, the more expensive ones are better. So also, if you can craft or cook whichever item or buff you need, uh, of course, you have to go for it. 
Now, gearing will also follow the same priority. Um, search for the necessary PvP gear from a uh, fan site like, uh, or a database site like Wowhead or other similar sites. So just be aware and be very careful as I made, uh, I made this mistake. Uh, just be aware that some pieces, PvP pieces, do not, uh, for the head, the chest, and you know, basically the set pieces, they, not all of them provide set bonuses, so make sure you pick the right piece. And uh, lastly, if you've been following the legendary quest line, just be aware that you can use uh, the legendary quest chain ring as it provides bonus armor. Okay, now it's time to discuss some of the really useful abilities and how to use them for defensive stance PvP. So for the offensive side of things, it's, it's simple. So you basically have Devastate, Shield Slam, Revenge, Execute, Thunderclap, and Heroic Strike. So for Devastate, you basically use that if you're not doing anything else. So you just spam the skill. Uh, if it procs a free Shield Slam, then of course you hit Shield Slam. Now for Shield Slam, you hit it whenever it's up. If it crits, you get a free Heroic Strike, which is also a guaranteed crit. Now, for a Glyph Suggestion, well basically, well, sorry, it's not a Glyph Suggestion, but a Glyph Requirement. So that's Glyph of Shield Slam. So, uh, what it does is that every time Shield Slam connects, you dispel a magical effect. So, for Gladiator Stance PvP, Defensive Stance PvP, uh, Glyph of Shield Slam is just really a must. So the third offensive skill is Revenge, so hit this whenever it's up. Just, rem just remember that it also cleaves nearby targets for half the damage, so that's useful if you're running into a me melee cleave. Execute, so if Sudden Death procs, which is the talent I do suggest, um, this takes priority over your other offensive skills. Next is Thunderclap, so spam this ability for the minor damage and snare. It's going to be really something, you know, it's, it's free. Uh, it doesn't cost any rage uh, for a prot warrior, so it's going to be really annoying uh, for your opponents. And of course, the last one is Heroic Strike, so use this whenever it procs off Shield Slam or you have enough rage. So just remember to try to save your rage for burst opportunities when it's possible. While on Heroic Strike, I do want to suggest the Glyph of Hindering Strikes. So it adds, well, what that Glyph does is that it adds 50% snare effect to your target for about 8 seconds. So while Thunderclap uh, does the job, usually the snare effect, uh, you might want to consider this so that the Heroic Strikes are more efficient. Okay, so let's get into your defensive abilities. So that just Shield Barrier, uh, Shield Block, Pummel, Demo Shout, Shield Wall, and Last Stand. So, Shield Barrier, it's one of your Rage Cost abilities and doesn't require a Stand Switch. So, it's really useful for when you need to, you know, reduce non-physical damage. You can also pool your Rage if you predict high amounts of damage or you can combine it with other defensive CDs in case that's lacking. Um, shield Block, it's... Well, it's basically very useful now with all the melee classes running around. Um, it also costs a lot of rage, so just be very much aware of that. Pummel is, well, basically it's just a basic um, spell interrupt ability. So while we're on that, I do have a strong um, glyph to suggest, and that's a glyph of rude interruption. So what it does is that it increases your damage by 6% after a successful interrupt. So you know, you know bringing, bringing the pain to casters. Uh, Demo Shout, uh, this reduces damage taken by 20% from all affected, affected enemies for about 8 seconds. So this is really good for damage reduction for any encounter. So the 1 minute cooldown was already good, but because of your, the tier 7 talent I recommend, I strongly recommend, uh, the cooldown of Demo, demo Shout is further shortened. Next ability is Shield Wall, so it's basically strong damage reduction for 8 seconds, so coupled with your basic tankiness, people going ham on you, you know, will basically just get very, very frustrated. 
the final defensive ability is Last Stance, so extra health when you need it. So again, I, I think I mentioned it earlier that if you team it up with Commanding Shout and Enraged Regen, it you know it's almost like you have Paladin's a Paladin's lay on hands. Well, it's not, but uh, you know when you pop those cooldowns and you hit Enraged Regen, it it just sort of feels like that. Okay, so there are two other abilities that I want to you know, mention here. Uh, the first one is Hero Heroic Leap. So what it does is that you basically jump into a target location while dealing minor damage upon impact. So for that ability, I do have two glyph suggestions. So the first one is a glyph of death from above. Uh, what that does is that it shortens the cooldown of the ability by 15 seconds, but there's a trade-off where the range of heroic leap is reduced to a maximum of 25 yards and the second glyph is glyph of, of the same name glyph, glyph of heroic leap so it gives you a short speed boost after doing heroic leap so for either glyph suggestion um, try to experiment on both and see which one suits you better so i find myself often snared so the speed boost um, is sometimes negated while death from above short range is really just frustrating. So uh, mages and hunters are, are the usual concern, so pick the glyph that you find more useful. Uh, make sure that you, know, you also consider uh, rogues and ferals as well. So just in case you're interested, so far, you know, lately I've just been running with um, glyph of heroic leap. The next ability is Mocking Banner. Actually, it's a pair, uh, Mocking Banner and Intervene. So Mocking Banner, while extremely useful in PvE encounters, can still work as an annoyance in PvP. But what makes Mocking Banner uh, useful is that you can still use it as an Intervene target. So the just remember that the combo will no longer remove roots and snares as in mist, but you know, it's still additional mobility. Okay, so it's macros and add-ons time. Um, for macros, there's you know there are a whole lot of macros out there that you can use for PvP. But since this is a basic guide, uh, I'll, I'll basically mention some that are worth considering. So the first one you're seeing right now is your one-shot macro. Um, it just basically combines the use of your trinket and your um, in this case, if you're using it, your bloodbath ability. The next one is your Mocking Banner uh, macro. So I mentioned it earlier, what this macro does is that it just makes it easier for you to use your Mocking Banner as an intervene target. Now, again, if you do want to use more macros for PvP, I strongly suggest that you search the web. Now, for add-ons, uh, add-ons can really be tricky for PvP. Uh, I suggest ELV UI from tukui.org. Uh, it's basically a standard UI replacement I suggest in all my guides. But uh, one other strong suggestion, especially for Arena, is Gladius. So it helps you track um, uh, your opponent's abilities, what they've been using, and stuff like that. So for Gladius, just head on over to curse.com. Um, for other add-ons, um, again, as I mentioned, it's tricky. Um, you know, just keep changing them as you need. Um, or you can just simply just def use the default UI if you're comfortable with that and keep Gladius. And that's it for my basic uh, defensive stance PvP guide. So I really hope you give it a try as it's really, really a fun spec. So. If you have any suggestions or comments, just leave them below. You might have ideas that others could find useful. So like this video if you liked it, and as always, subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching, and keep on gaming, guys.